is called the heretic's fork. This stuck on the old set, right, right up in here. And if you had the wrong religion, or you got caught with the wrong Bible, now they did this to you for the good of your soul. You died, but it guaranteed that you went to heaven. They call this an auto da fe, right? an act of faith. Uh, pole arm for jailers, noise makers, and what these would do, you put them around and they could make you scream, right, with a noise, right? Necklaces for ne'er do well. If you didn't have no job, they didn't permit unemployment in those days. <laughs> if you were unemployed, it was your fault. And therefore, you had to be punished for not having a job. <laughs> well, oh yeah, well, if you don't laugh with gallows humor, what else can you do? We need, because this, and think about it. Huh? And you carry this. Why ain't you ain't got no job, MF? I know you ain't got none because you're carrying the badge of unemployment. <laughs> Dice and all these things, and they tinkle as you walk. Bing -a -ling -a -ling, they can hear you four blocks away. <laughs> Better not take it off. Huh? A barrel pillory. What'd you say? Now that's the best turn. Yes, ma'am. This they, they they open this up and they put it, see it on there? And this cuts in your neck. You gotta wear this thing for as long as they tell you. This dark ages, they always they're dark is white, thank you. This is a skull splitter. They put that around your skull, it's self-explanatory, and just tighten it. And if your skull, man, I know they say that African folks have hard heads. And this is the last one I'll titillate you with. This is a head crusher. This, of course, unscrews, open up. The cap goes down this way. This goes under here. And like with a corkscrew that you, when you want to get it in to get the cork out, they just screw. And as you applied each turn, the pain became more and more excruciating. Now, why do I take the time to do it? I told you, you have to look at these things holistically. <coughs> Bear in mind that these things were being done by Europeans, to Europeans a thousand years before they ever knew I had any knowledge of us or where their knowledge of us was like superstition. <coughs> now, and to bring it to the day, if this is what you would do, if this is the heritage you have to your own people, what would you do to me? <coughs> no worries, right? And if I can identify you by this, makes it easy, doesn't it? All I have to do is put you beyond the pale. Now, when we look at it and come down, we can see that there is a pattern of this, a pattern of this kind of audacious cruelty. No other culture do I know of have ever produced these kinds of things. And if they had, you know damn well that they would have made sure they were out there. Now remember I said earlier, and all this is a prayer, but they're talking that the things we're trying to do, they call this feel-good history. Feel-good history. The fact that you hide this, what do you call that? The history that we have been subjected to and miseducated by is feel-good history for European folks. To guarantee that you get a job, Oh, that's terrible, that's affirmative action. <coughs> but slavery was affirmative action for white people. Jim Crow was affirmative action for white people. Not having access to certain craft jobs, railways, carpenters, electrical work was affirmative action for white people. <coughs> Automatically barring blacks from police departments, fire departments, sanitation departments, which most cities at one time or another did was affirmative action for who? White people. Education, secondary and third and fourth class or none, 
was considered academic affirmative action for white people. The movies then was a continuation of an entertainment system which was structured and followed lines of feel-good history for white people. Is that clear? Now what that feel-good history meant, that they needed to be constantly faced with what they believed to be African inferiority, which means they had very thin egos. The Eastern European Jews coming here, and ironically coming here as an oppressed people, they didn't come here looking for adventure children, they came here running. Aaron Lopez, this gentleman here, which of course started all the problems that Kreitler did, did that fast. Aaron Lopez was, let me read what he was, so y'all don't say I'm making it up. And I'm capable of making things up, don't get me wrong. If it'll help liberation, I don't have no problem with lying. <laughs> lying is just as a tool, use it well. Here, chapter 15, Aaron and Empire. As the 1770s progressed, the name of Aaron Lopez became known throughout the trading centers of the Western world. Still a young man, barely 40, the former Portuguese fugitive was rapidly mounting to the summit of his career. So a whole lot of these names you see that you think are Spanish, Pacheco, Sisius, Guzman, all of these, Guzman started out as Germany, Gutmann. All of these were either Sephardic or Portuguese Jews. When Lynn Jeffries talked about the Spanish grandees and the Sephardim, Sephardim was the ancient Hebrew name for Spain. And all it does was to distinguish that group of Spanish and Portuguese Jews, the Jews from the Iberian community, from the Ashkenazis or the others. And they went through a different history. Now, how do we understand this? All of the Jews who became famous in Hollywood came from within 500 miles of each other in Europe. They were all belonging to the category of what is known as the Russian Jewry, Eastern European Jewry, who had been traditionally looked down, the Litvaks as they were called, Lithuanians, and they were looked down upon the Western or Ashkenazim or Sephardim as being inferior. What the lady just said, prepare the groundwork. Which meant German Jews consider themselves integrated. This is where Reform Judaism started in Germany, where they decided to change it around to be more like the Germans. They brought the organ into the synagogue. They brought music into the synagogue. Uh, they stopped doing certain things of the Orthodox ritual that they felt would single them out from the Germans. You understand? You have to look at, when you talk about Holocaust, again, you got to look at the background. As my grandma said, you got to know them things, where it comes from. Now, in our time, the group of jury that lost the largest amount of people to the Holocaust were the German Jews. And I think there's a lesson there for African folk, because the German Jews were the most assimilated Jews of all the European Jews. And they considered themselves, for the most part, Germans, like a certain other group. Uh, who I don't want to name because I don't want to embarrass nobody. A lot of them consider themselves Americans. I don't have nothing to do with Africa. I, I didn't mean to say that. I'm an American. And the German Jews ultimately set themselves up. A lot of them did. Because even after Hitler came to power, many of them refused to leave. I'm a German. Oh, and I've got the documentation, because I know without them bullets, I'm a dead man. So that the Eastern European Jews were always looked down upon. They were the last of the way. The ones that came here in the latter half of the 19th century, the ones that settled on the east side, no, those were Eastern European Jewry. 
And it was from this group that people like Samuel Goldwyn, uh, Samuel Goldfish, alias Samuel Goldwyn, Louis Mayer, um, uh, George Chukov, Joe Shank, uh, Louis Mayer, you know, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, Sam Mayer, the Shank brothers, Joseph and Nicholas, Jesse Lasky, famous players, Paramount Studios. The Eastern European Jew, Carl Limler, who founded Universal Studios. Harry Korn, C-O-H-N, the big wheel of Columbia. All Eastern European Jews all came from a different area. Now, one of the things that we have to say, looking at how people treat each other, that's one reason I looked at that before, shared that with you. If you can understand the schism and the way the Western European Jewry looked down Eastern European Jewry, their thing was, well, I have to give you charity. I recognize that you are Jewish, but I don't associate with you. I do not marry with you. We do not go to the same synagogue. Temple Emmanuel in New York is the outstanding example of the German Jewry or our crowd synagogue. There, even today, very few Eastern European Jews either get married there or worship there, only after they have made their name. But so what that did to the Eastern European Jews and one beyond the pale, Poland, Russia, and whatnot, it gave them a sense of paranoia, and obviously they did not like their Western European Jews or German Jewish brothers.